Mother, is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. A decade or so before the turn of the 20th century... The city editor of the New York Sun came up with a remarkably simple definition of news. When a dog bites a man, he said, that is not news because it happens so often. But if a man bites a dog, that is news. Well, in Springfield, in the white frame house on Maple Street, news may very well be in the making. Nothing unusual has happened thus far, but it's quite possible that before the week is out, a man named Anderson will bite a dog like this. Holy cow, Dad, I couldn't help it. Bud, when you signed the good driving pledge... But I wasn't even driving, Dad. The car was just sitting there. And the fender dropped off all by itself. Sure. Bud, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But it's true, Dad. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole car fell apart. Is that so? There's nothing wrong with the car and you know it. Daddy... What is it, Kathy? Did you know that in the polar regions, dogs are the chief means of transportation? What's that got to do with Bud knocking a fender off the car? I didn't knock it off, Dad. It fell off. Bud, unless you're willing to tell me the truth... Jim, Bud is not in the habit of telling lies. And if he says the fender fell off, then it fell off. And we put it back on again with wire, Dad. You'd never even know the difference. Oh, fine. <laughs> Bud, if I ever find out... Oh, never mind. May I have my coffee, Margaret? Of course, dear. Here you are. Thank you. Nothing. What? It doesn't have anything to do with Bud knocking a fender off the car. I did not. Wait a minute, Bud. Kathy, what doesn't have anything to do with Bud knocking a fender off the car? Dogs are the chief means of transportation in the polar regions. Fine. I'll order a dog sled in the morning. <laughs> Is that what you want? Oh, no. I just wanted to tell you. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Silliest thing I've ever heard in my life. That car's practically as good as it was the day we bought it. Might need a little paint here and there. Daddy. What is it, Kathy? Did you know that the dog has been chosen as the companion of man because of his fidelity and intelligence? Well, I'd heard rumors, but it's nice to have it on such complete authority. You're welcome. <laughs> Dad. Yes, bud. Does that mean that I can't have the car on Thursday anymore? No, I suppose it'll be all right. But in the future, I wish you'd be a little more careful, that's all. I wouldn't be surprised if the roof caved in. Betty, what's gotten into you? Until tonight, the only complaint you ever had about the car was that you didn't get it often enough. Jim. Yes, Margaret? The Liggetts have a new car. A convertible. Oh. Well, pardon me. Dogs are bred for sports, as watchdogs, for guarding and driving sheep, and for plain, ordinary dogs. Kathy, deep in your obscure little mind... I'll see you it is. You stay right where you are. I want to get to the bottom of this dissertation on dogs. Bud? Yes, Dan? See who's at the door. Holy cow. <laughs> you think nobody else around here knew how to open a door. All right, Kathy. Will you explain something to me as simply as possible? Why this sudden interest in the history of our canine companions? Huh? Dogs. Oh, well, dogs are pets, and everybody says they're man's best friend, and they'd probably be girls' best friends, too. And I don't see why... Kathy, are you going to start that dog business again? But everybody I know has a dog, and I don't see why... You know as well as I that Betty's allergic to dogs. They make her sneeze. Dad, it's Mr. David. Oh, come on in, Ed. Hello, Jim, Margaret. Hello, Ed. Hello, girls. Hello, Mr. Davis. We're just finishing our dinner, Ed. How about a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thanks, Jim. I, well, I just want to talk to you about your dog. Our what? 
Well, I wouldn't mind if it were just an ordinary rose bush, Jim, but this was a Bengal, a genuine hibiscus rosa sinensis. Ed. I only had to, and you ought to see the one he dug up. It's a complete wreck. Ed. Yes, Jim. What dog? Why, your dog. We don't have a dog. You know that. Daddy. Jim. (laughs) I dislike this whole thing as much as you do, but that bush cost me $13. Ed, we don't have a dog. Daddy. And I I wouldn't even know where to get another one. They only had two in town. I bought both of them. Ed. Yes, Jim. We don't have a dog. Daddy. Kathy, I'm talking to Mr. Davis. I know, Daddy, but I want to tell you something. All right, what is it? We have a dog. (laughs) Fine. Look, Ed, I know how you must feel, but... We what? Kathy, you're joking. What do you mean, we have a dog? It was such a poor little dog, Daddy. And it kept following me and following me. And Kathy, uh, you mean we have a dog here? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, uh, <laughs> Betty, stop that. I can't stop it, Father. You certainly can. Kathy, you've been told a thousand times not to bring a dog into the house. Uh, uh, chow! <laughs> She's just doing that to be mean. I have done. She wasn't sneezing before, and the dog was here all the time Where? What? Where is it? Where's what? The dog Oh, the dog (laughs) Kathy, where did you put the dog? In the playroom Well, we'll just see about that Of course, it isn't the most valuable rose bush in the world, Jim, but... If you knew the trouble I'd gone through... Jim, where are you going? Down to the playroom. Oh, Daddy, please don't be mean to the little dog. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Where do you think you're going, bud? Well, can I come with you? Gosh, I just want to look at it. I didn't mean to start all this trouble, Jim, but after all, he did dig up the rose bush. I know, Ed. I'll be very glad to pay for it as soon as we... Oh. (laughs) My aching back. Look at the size of that thing. (laughs) Holy cow. Um, I'll I'll, I'll just wait for you upstairs, Jim. (laughs) Kathy, that isn't a dog. It's a werewolf. (laughs) No, it isn't, Daddy. It's a dog, and you're frightening him. I'm frightening him. (laughs) Poor little fella. We're not going to hurt you. Kathy, get away from him. But, Daddy... You heard me, Kathy. (laughs) You don't get away from that dog. Well, stay over there if that's what he wants. But don't get too close. Jim, Ed Davis said there was a lion in the basement. Did you... Oh, Kathy. Isn't he cute, Mommy? Kathy, come over here. You, uh, you better do as your mother says, Kathy. (laughs) Maybe she better do what the dog says. What are we going to do? We're going to find out where he belongs and get rid of him. That's what we're going to do. Oh, Daddy, you can't. He's such a beautiful dog, and he's so easy to feed. All he eats is cookies. Bud. (laughs) Uh, See what the tag says on his collar. On his collar? Me? Oh, he won't hurt you, Bud. Will you, George? Well, go ahead, Bud. There's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, that's a nice fella. <laughs> nice, George. Oh, his name isn't exactly George, bud. I just call him that. Oh, you're a great help. <laughs> nice boy. <laughs> that's a nice boy. That a boy. Uh, what does it say, bud? Gargantua the third. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how you say it. Property of Michael Reed, Orchard Avenue. Orchard Avenue? Well, that's a mile away. How did he get clear over here? I think he walked. 
<laughs> well, he can walk right back. Bud, call Mr. Reed and tell him we have his dog. Oh, Daddy, no! Oh, Daddy, yes! <laughs> Kathleen, it isn't our dog, and we've got to send him back home. But, Mommy, mm. I love him so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cry, Kathy. Gosh, you've still got us. Everybody's got somebody. And all I have is you. You want me to answer it, Dad? No, never mind. I'm right here. Mr. Anderson? Yes? I'm Mr. Reed's chauffeur. Oh, yes. Come on right in. Oh, thank you. Very nice of you to go to all this trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Mr. Reed was quite concerned about Gargantua, quite concerned. Well, we uh, weren't too happy about him ourselves. Uh, Kathy? You want me, Daddy? The man is here for the dog. Gee whiz. She'll have it up here in just a minute. Uh, Peculiar-looking animal, isn't it? Oh, no. It's a very valuable dog. Vimarana. A vi... You don't say. <laughs> yes, it's a uh, German hunting dog. Very intelligent. Well, that's a matter of opinion. Kathy, will you please hurry? Daddy, I can't find him. You what? Well, Daddy, the most terrible thing happened. He got away. Kathy. But he did, Daddy. I just opened the door, and he was gone. You uh, didn't happen to give him a push. Oh, Daddy, how can you say... Well, maybe one little push. <laughs> now, see here, Kathleen. Oh, you don't have to worry, Daddy. I think I can find him again later. I, uh, I'm awfully sorry about this. I understand. Oh, hello, Ed. Oh, Jim, I don't like Ed, to... please, I told you I'd get you another rose bush, and I will. First thing in the morning. I know, Jim, but after all... Now... George got away. Yes, I know he got away. Only he didn't get far enough away. Have you seen him? Yes, I've seen him. He's in my backyard, and he's having a wonderful time. All right, Kathy, go get him. Gee whiz. And Jim. Yes? When you get that hibiscus sinensis tomorrow, make it two. Oh, no. <laughs> across the country, there's good news about coffee these days. Grocers everywhere are featuring Maxwell House at lower prices. That's right. These days, the coffee with that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor comes to you at the lowest prices in months. A mighty welcome occasion for everybody. You, your grocer, yes, and for Maxwell House, too. With Maxwell House coffee, we've always aimed at one thing, to bring you the best in coffee at the lowest possible price. And that's meant a lot meant you could always count on more flavor for your money in every cup of Maxwell House, more wonderfully good cups of coffee in every pound. It's the reason why, year after year, folks everywhere have found Maxwell House is true economy. And nowadays, Maxwell House is more than ever today's coffee buy. The world's most famous coffee flavor is yours to enjoy every cup you pour. And the price is the lowest in months. So tomorrow, get your money's worth and more. Bring home a familiar blue tin of Maxwell House and start enjoying coffee that's always good to the last drop. The dog is a creature whose principal feature is love, and there's nothing can daunt him. He'll stay by your side as though he were tied, especially if you don't want him. A few days have gone by, and in Springfield, we find a most unhappy individual. Between roses, which cannot be found, and a dog, which refuses to get lost, Jim Anderson's lot is a miserable one indeed. Like this. Go on, get him. <laughs> oh, isn't he cute, Daddy? He wants to play. Well, tell him to play with something else. But he likes you, Daddy. 
All right, I like him, but you don't see me biting his shoes. Oh, he just wants to be friendly. No good fender. Why don't they make the bolts big enough? They don't want you to fix your car, that's what. Expect you to buy a new one every five minutes. Daddy. What is it, Kathy? George is hungry. George is hungry. George is sleepy. George, George, George. Kathy. Yes, Daddy? How many times have you found that dog? Six. And how many times have we sent him home? Six. Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Any dog that's stupid enough to get trapped in back of a fence six times in a row... Hi, Jim. Oh, Ed, come on over here. I've got good news for you. Okay. Hey, see, George is back again. Yeah, idiotic animal. Comes clear over here from Orchard Avenue and then gets stuck in back of the Willoughby's fence. <laughs> smart dog. He is smart, Daddy. He knows that's where I meet him. Well, why don't you leave him there? Let somebody else find him for a change. But, Daddy, the Willoughby's moved away. There wouldn't be anybody to feed him. He can always eat rose bushes. Oh, that's what I wanted to tell you, Ed. There they are. You mean those? Yep, two Bengals, and I had to go clear to Plainfield to get them. Jim, I don't like to be difficult, but those aren't Bengals. They most certainly are. Look at the tags. Hmm. Well, they're marked Bengals, all right, but... Oh, well, you see, Jim, there are two kinds of Bengals. A hibiscus rosa sinensis and rosa japanicus. Now, mine were hibiscus sinensis, and they're a much hardier variety. Ed, a rose is a rose. <laughs> and you said Bengals. I don't like to argue, Jim, but I said hibiscus sinensis. You see, the japanicus is very susceptible to mildew and thrips. That's bad, huh? Oh, yeah, especially around here. The Japanicus doesn't do well in Springfield at all. It needs a much milder climate. I see. You, uh, you wouldn't consider moving? <laughs> Nothing. I... I'll keep looking, Ed. After all, what's a few more days? I wouldn't be able to do anything but work anyway. Uh, Mr. Anderson? Oh, hello there. We're back here near the garage. Mr. Anderson, I don't know what to say. Mr. Reed is most apologetic. Yes, I'm sure he must be. Well, I'll be getting back to my gardening. I've got another bed of geraniums to set up. I'm sorry they weren't the right ones, Ed. Oh, that's all right, Jim. There's no particular hurry, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Anderson, I want to assure you that we've done everything in our power to keep Gargantua at home. I'm sure you have. I've gone over the fence with a fine-tooth comb. We've fixed everything, and still he gets out. Maybe the fence isn't high enough. Well, it's quite high, but we're going to make it higher. And now if I may have the dog... Yes, Kathy. Now, where the dickens did she go? Kathy! You want me, Daddy? Where's George? George? No, we call him George. Kathy! I'm coming, Daddy! Maybe if you called him George, he'd stay home. Well, it might be a little confusing, but we'll try. Kathy, why is it... What happened to George? I don't know, Daddy. Isn't he with you? No, he isn't with me. <laughs> Where'd he go? I don't know. Kathy, why is it that every time Mr. Reed's chauffeur... George. Thank you. Every time George shows up, George... <laughs> George? Yes, sir. George. Oh. Well, why, why is it every time George shows up, jo uh, the dog disappears? I don't know. What do you know? I don't know. I'm sorry, George, but George, uh, Gargantua. George! Jim! Ed, is George over there? He certainly is, and I'm very slowly reaching the point where I don't think it's at all funny. Ed, he didn't tear up another rosebush. No. Well, thank goodness. This time he got the geraniums. <laughs> George dug up the geraniums? No, but I made a bed, and he's lying in it. <laughs> $35 for two miserable little rose bushes. It's criminal, that's what it is. Jim, let's just be thankful that we were able to find them. Hibiscus sinensis. Margaret, if I ever see that dog again, so help me... Jim. I'll... What's the matter? He's back. Oh, no, he can't be. Well, stop the car, Jim. We've got to get him. Why? Why can't we just pretend that we've never met George? That we've never even heard of him? Dear, we owe it to Mr. Reed. 
Mr. Reed. He's the one who ought to pay for the roses. George is his dog. Jim, that's not being very charitable. Well, I don't feel very charitable. Where is he? Back of the Willoughby's fence. Again? Margaret, that's the stupidest animal I've ever seen in my life. This is the eighth time he's been stuck in the Willoughby's yard. Any dog with half a brain knows you can jump both ways over a fence. Come here, you silly mongrel. Oh, Jim, isn't that sweet? He knows us. Well, why shouldn't he know us? He's been boarding with us for almost a week. Come on, George. That's a good boy. Take his collar, Jim. I'd like to wring his neck. Come on, George. Jim, I don't think you're being very nice to him. Well, I don't think he's being very nice to us. George, will you please make up your mind? You want to come home with us, or are you going to stay here? Daddy! Oh, Daddy, you found us again! Oh, George, I'm so happy to see you. Oh, my wonderful George. Kathy, nice drag guy. that animal over to our house. Oh, you don't have to drag him, Daddy. Well, get him over there. And this time, hang on to him. Okay, Daddy. Come on, George, I'll race you to the garage. <laughs> Man's best friend. <laughs> Intelligent and loyal. A half witted caterpillar has more intelligence than that George. Jim, how about the car? I'll come back for it later. Right now, I'm going to call that Reed guy and give him a piece of my mind. That's what I'm going to do. If he can't learn to take better care of a dog, he doesn't have any business owning one. Jim, I'm sure Mr. Reed is doing everything he can. Well, it isn't enough. Owning a dog is a responsibility to the dog and the neighborhood and everybody else. Let a dog run wild that way, first thing you know, you'll be hit by a car. He's liable to be killed. I thought you didn't like George. I don't. I mean, well, he's all right, I guess, but they have no business letting him run around the way they do. Jim, please don't be too abrupt. Mr. Reed is just as concerned about George as we are. Well, why shouldn't he be? It's his dog. Hello? Oh, this is Jim Anderson. Yes, he's here again. And look, George, I think it's high time... Well, okay. He's coming right over. Jim, when he gets here, please remember that George isn't responsible for George. After all, he's merely the chauffeur. Which one? George. Oh. He told me this morning that Mr. Reed was going to have the entire fence made higher, and if Mr. Reed thinks that much of George... Now, just a minute, Margaret. Bud! You want me, Dad? Go outside and hang on to George. Okay. Betty! Are you in your room? Yes, Father. Well, look out the window and keep an eye on George. Okay. He won't get away this time if I can help it. Now, uh, what were you saying, Margaret? Well, I merely said that if Mr. Reed thought that much of George... Gee, gods, now what? I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Anderson. Well, you should be. Anybody who can't take better care of a nice dog like George... We do take care of him, Mr. Anderson. We still can't understand how he gets away. That's a very poor excuse. How would you feel if I... Wait a minute. How did you get over here so fast? Well, I left the moment I hung up. I know, but from clear over on Orchard Avenue... Oh, we haven't lived on Orchard Avenue for almost a week. We moved into the Willoughby house on the corner. Oh, no. <laughs> When you go grocery shopping this weekend, be sure to see the welcome news about coffee in your store. These days, grocers everywhere are featuring Maxwell House coffee at lower prices. Now, all of you who know and love that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor can enjoy it at the lowest price in months. And for you folks who haven't been getting that famous flavor, now's the time to bring home a familiar blue Maxwell House tin. Find out how much more satisfaction, more real pleasure it holds for you. Cup after cup, day after day, you can always count on that Maxwell House flavor. For we'll never compromise on the quality of a single pound. Tomorrow, look for Maxwell House at the lowest prices in months. Now more than ever, today's coffee buy. Get your money's worth and more 
with coffee that's always good to the last drop. Another day has come and gone, and so has the perennial George. There's peace once more in the Anderson household, but we wonder just how long it will last. It never does, does it? Like this. Most ridiculous thing that ever happened in my whole life. Stealing a dog out of his own yard. They could have had us arrested. Father. Yes, Betty? Have you noticed how quiet it's gotten around here? I certainly have. Nice and quiet. How was I supposed to know anybody'd moved in? Why didn't they put up curtains or something? That George is a pretty smart dog. And what a character. You know what he did yesterday? Whatever he did, I'm not going to pay for it. Oh, it wasn't anything like that, Dad. Kathy taught him how to play hide-and-seek, and he was really hiding. Good. I hope it's years before anybody finds him. <laughs> Why, Jim, you know you miss George as much as any of us. I do? I miss George? Huh. Margaret, this is the first peaceful moment I've had in almost a week. Daddy! 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 Kathy, what is it? What's wrong? Oh, Daddy, the most beautiful thing happened. Mr. Reed gave me a reward. Why, how nice, Kathy. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, it was certainly the least he could do. What was the reward, Kathy? I can borrow George any time I please. No. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? Here, George. <laughs> oh, my beautiful George. Hiya, <laughs> boy. Ha, 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 Hello, George. Now yours to enjoy an instant coffee you'll love for breakfast every morning. An instant coffee you'll be proud to serve to your dinner guests. It's Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Here's the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. Tomorrow, try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor, instantly good to the last drop. In lands across the seas, many people still lack the simplest necessities of life. Food is inadequate, clothing scarce. Help is needed from each of us who can send it. The time to send that help is now. The way to send it is through CARE, C-A-R-E. For this is National Care Week, and Americans everywhere are joining in sending food and clothing abroad. To send a 24-pound package, mail $10 to CARE, New York. That's $10 to CARE, New York. Enclose your name and address and the address of the recipient. Delivery is guaranteed. Join in National Care Week now. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Don't forget, membership cards for the Robert Young Good Drivers Club are waiting for you at your local NBC station. Get a man-to-man -man or dad-to-daughter pledge and sign up today. Be a good driver. Get your membership card in the Robert Young Good Drivers Club today. Now until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Stay tuned for Charles Boyer and Olivia de Havilland on NBC.